Play Your Roll is a proud affiliate of Only Crits Dice. Check the link in the description for beautiful hard edge dice sets as well as a coupon code in order to be able to get 15% off your next order. If you want amazing high quality tabletop products as well as to support the channel, please go ahead and check it out. Enjoy the video! So, full disclosure, I'm actually feeling pretty under the weather today, so if I sound a little bit different or eh, I apologize. I really do just want to go ahead and record these videos because honestly, I really enjoy making them for you guys. I enjoy editing them and they've kind of become my happy space. So, I hope it's okay if I sound a little bit different today. But with that being said, let's jump into the topic of today's video because it's one I'm actually really, really excited for, and that's the mentor character. See, I received a lot of requests on videos on how to play the mentor character. You know, your typical old wizened individuals who seem to have the right thing to say at the right time always. Your Iros, your Gandalfs, your Dumbledores, the like. And I really enjoy those archetypes. In fact, they are some of my favorites. A lot of those characters will rank up in my top 10 of top 10 characters of all time. I love those types of characters. And so I was very excited to talk about it. I was, however, surprised by another request I kept getting. Something similar and will be included in this video, but was so specific I couldn't help but point it out. And that was for the amount of comments asking for me to talk about specifically the party mom. Now that was interesting to me because they weren't asking for specifically the mentor character, but the party mom. And this was a topic that came up time and time again from different people. And I realized that was a title that was so common or a concept that so many people were wanting or knew about. I've heard the concept with the party mom before, don't get me wrong. You know, the one individual who seems to act as a motherly matronly figure for everybody. Kind, caring, thoughtful. But the fact that so many people asked for specifically that was very interesting to me. And so I wanted to point it out and talk about that as well. So let's talk about that. So when considering the mentor-like character, you have to consider a few different things. One, you are going to be a character who's going to be in the background most of the time. You'll notice a lot of the times with the mentor characters, they're very powerful, very cool, but you don't usually interact with things. And that's because in stories, the mentor character plays a very specific role. Their job is not to take care of the problems for the protagonist. Their job is to help the protagonist grow strong enough to take on those things by themselves. And so a lot of the times, whether through deus ex machinas or different scenarios, the mentor character will not be able to take care of the problem for the character. A lot of the times in the earlier parts of the stories, the mentor character will actually be able to help the protagonist overcome the challenges in front of them. But for a lot of reasons, they won't. Either they're not technically supposed to, or they trust the protagonist to be able to do it. Or my personal favorite, they know that the protagonist will be able to do it, but they have to believe that they're on their own in order to be able to overcome that challenge. They have to instill that sense of confidence within themselves. <laughs> when you do things right, people won't be sure you've done anything at all. But there's a lot of different ways that the mentor can go about doing this, but the one thorough thread is that the mentor character will not take care of the problems for the protagonist, unless it is absolutely necessary. You'll see this quite a few times. How many times does Iroh step in and solve Zuko's problems? He generally won't. He'll give advice, he'll give assistance, but when the time comes for things to get down to the wire, he'll trust that his nephew's going to do the right thing. And when he doesn't, Iroh will oftentimes step in in order to be able to save him. <laughs> Identically, a lot of the times Dumbledore does this for Harry. How many times did he give Harry hints and clues on where to go and gave Harry the right push in the right direction? But when times got rough and Harry really needed the help, Dumbledore showed up. Same with Gandalf. He would often encourage Frodo and Bilbo to be able to do the right thing. He would give them the confidence that they needed, insist that they were capable of doing more than they realized, but he would show up to protect them when times got too tough. Now that is an important part of this character, and a really, really fun part, but the second thing that you need to consider when playing a mentor character is the fact that typically the mentor characters are over-competent, and that doesn't super work well with D&D and tabletop games. What I mean by over-competent is think about Iroh, Gandalf, Dumbledore, the three I've decided to use as examples for this video, though there are many others out there that perfectly describe this trope. When playing these types of characters, you probably want to emulate those characters you've seen in literature and media, but in literature and media, those characters are over-competent can solve most of the problems the rest of the characters would show up against. Same for Gandalf and for Dumbledore. They are all overly powerful, to the point of potentially being overpowered, and a lot of the times they can't interact with things for story reasons. Iroh cannot do so because he cannot reveal who he truly is, that he is this war criminal. Dumbledore often will not because he is tied because of political means or because other people are watching him and so he can't directly get involved, and so he ends up being a little irresponsible and sending high schoolers to go do his job. And then there's Gandalf, who oftentimes does actually step in and protect everybody, but he gets separated from them at a certain point and no longer can defend them. The story will typically separate them so that they do not interfere. But in D&D, I mean, you can do this. 
There are many instances I've seen where somebody plays a higher level character that ultimately gets separated from the party, and you have to work with your DM on that. I myself have actually played a character who was the same level as everybody else, but was a homebrewed class that was specifically stronger than everybody else. The homebrewed class was just overtuned. It allowed you to essentially use Moon Druid's Wild Shape at a much earlier and more powerful level, and Moon Druid's Wild Shape is already overpowered. And so when you go ahead and you take that concept, what did I do with it? I just didn't use my abilities. Anytime a fight happened, I wouldn't use my class features. I'd step in and use the help action, or I'd see if I could do something else or talk the situation down. And only when things got very serious, I mean two players down in the first round of combat series, did I step in and use my abilities. And that's the important thing you have to keep in mind, is a mentor character is typically overpowered. But in D&D, unless you're in a specific scenario like me where I was playing a homebrewed class that was already too strong, you're probably not going to be overcompetent. You can min-max and optimize, and for this type of character, I would actually encourage it. But when you do that, you also have to keep in mind that the mentor character is not supposed to solve the problem. They're only there to support. And so you have two different options. You can min-max and optimize and make your character as strong as possible for the moments when you need to step in and be able to help out. But other than that, just kind of take things easy. Don't cast those spells. Just use the cantrips. Maybe cast spells at a lower level than you probably should. Encourage the rest of the party to do better, to grow stronger. Or you can min-max and optimize in the specific scenario of supporting everybody else. You are the strongest buffer, the strongest healer, the strongest whatever have you, to get the rest of the players where they need to go, to be able to help them on their character arcs and give them the point of where they want to go. And that is a wonderful way of doing it. But typically, the mental character is considered the strongest amongst the party. But you have to find a way of doing that while working with D&D, because D&D assumes you're all going to be generally on the same power level, as does the DM. And so if you want to go outside of that, you have to work with your DM and the rest of the table to make sure that that all works out as you guys are hoping and intending. But this leads on to the more roleplay aspect of playing a mentor character. And this is where I get into the party mother sort of vibe. The person who cares, who gives advice, who loves, who generally acts as a caretaker for the rest of the party. Motherly, that's what it is. It's right there. Like Now, you do not have to be older to play this sort of archetype, but you do have to keep one thing in mind. If you're going to play this character, it's not about you. There's nothing you can do about it. And like I said before, this is not about you! Nor date and set the gun one dung one. And that is an interesting thing to keep in mind. Typically, these characters are supportive, which means the story won't really be about them. They're probably not going to spend a ton of time in the spotlight. Now, will they spend time in the spotlight? Absolutely. I mean, how many times did we cheer when we saw Iroh break out of prison? Or when we saw Dumbledore finally use that fire spell? Or when we saw Gandalf say, I mean, come on, it's just so satisfying to see that. But those moments are far and few between. The mentor characters are meant to be a supportive background role. It is what they do. And in the D&D game, typically, it won't mean that you share the spotlight, but you push other people into it. The other thing you have to keep in mind is you have to pay attention to the other players. You have to see what struggles they have, and you have to make sure the advice that you give them is not telling them what to do. This is a big thing with mentor characters. Mentor characters will not tell you what to do until it comes down to the wire, and they want to challenge you to make the right decision. Where Iro told Zuko, It's time for you to look inward and begin asking yourself the big questions. Who are you? And what do you want? That is the important part, where you would challenge and directly face them, but you do not tell them what to do. They have to make their decision, or you're not being a good mentor, you're just being controlled. And it is really difficult to do this. My best suggestion is if you want to play this type of character and be supportive and give the characters the right advice that they need to in order to be able to make a good decision, talk with the players. Outside of game, message them and say, hey, I see that your druid is struggling with this. Is there something I could do to help with that? Is there something my character could notice that might help your character along the right path? Because here's the strange thing. We want our characters to grow. We want them to evolve. We want them to explore and change and become who they are going to become. But we don't want somebody else to tell us what they're going to do because that's not the point of D&D. It's not the point of tabletop games. The point is to make decisions, to change, to move, to experience what that's like. And if you are being told what to do, it takes away the magic. It takes away the reason you play the game. So when you're playing a mental character, you have to give them choices. You have to give them advice, but never tell them what to do. And more importantly, and this is good life advice in general, if you are trying to convince somebody of something that they're doing is self-destructive or wrong, help them come to that conclusion. Do not tell them that. It is far easier for our brains to comprehend that we may be doing something wrong if we come to that conclusion. Otherwise, we run into something that is a very odd phenomenon in humans, where we tend to be told something and be 
given objective facts that we are wrong, and that only causes us to double down more. Because when you are told something wrong, when you are convinced that you are wrong about something, it actually activates the same portion of the brain as physical pain. And so literally being told and convinced that we are wrong is the same thing as feeling pain. Now we don't feel a physical sensation, but we do have that incredibly unhappy portion of our brains lighting up and activating. And so of course people want to defend themselves from that. It is our nature to defend ourselves from being wrong, from being harmed. And so we double down on what it is we now know is wrong, but we just can't deal with that. And so when convincing somebody else that they are wrong about something or they need to change something, it is far easier for them and more therapeutic to help them come to that conclusion. My suggestion is ask their character questions. Do not tell them anything. If they are self-destructive in combat, they are a barbarian who's constantly throwing themselves in danger, start asking them questions. Why is it that you do that? Okay, I understand. It is how you contribute to the party. Why is it important that you contribute to the party in that way? Well, okay, yes, you are strong and you are very good at combat. I get that. But is that the only thing you bring to the table? Does it bother you that that's the only thing that you bring to the table? Have you considered the fact that maybe the rest of the party values you for more than just your rage? Have you considered the fact that we care for you as a person? Talk to them, lead them through questions and let them grapple with things. And know that every conversation that you have in character does not have to lead to a conclusion. All you need to do is plant the seed of them starting to question and let them grow from there. And if you can do that, you should be able to play a very entertaining and well-meaning mentor character at your table. So go out into the world, make it your own, you beautiful bastards. Don't forget to have a great day and never forget to play it. Thank you.